Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And today we're going to be reviewing Jace, because Jace has come out, I can see his deck, I can see his uh, level ups, I can see his constellation. Uh, I was pretty rough on Jace in the patch review, I said outright that I thought he was going to flop. So do I still think that? And uh, is he actually good? Uh, let's talk about it. So. First of all, let's quickly review the card, uh, for those that you don't know. Jace is a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. On play, you choose Quick Attack or Challenger, and he gains that keyword. If you summon him without playing him, he has a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four that does nothing. Um, if you play two or more 6-cost... Sorry, if you play two or more 6-cost spells, um, then he immediately levels up. And uh, when he levels up, you create an Acceleration Gate in hand. Acceleration Gate is a... Six mana slow spell that gives your allies plus two plus zero and quick attack this round. If they already have quick attack or double attack, they get a random keyword instead. And that is uh, going to be cast twice because that's what Jace does. When Jace is uh, summoned on as a four mana five five, each round the first time you play a six cost spell, copy it with the same targets. So, uh, Acceleration Gate with Jace on the field is plus four plus zero and two random keywords to your entire board. Or quick attack and then another random keyword. Uh, it's pretty good. You know, I'm not saying that Jace itself is a bad card. It's not, especially in the actual PvP env environment. Uh, but let's talk about the deck and about Path of Champions. So we've seen uh, Jace's deck, and one of the big questions that I had for it was whether Arm Gearhead would be a card in Jace's deck and whether it would get any item cards. It's not in Jace's deck. There. <laughs> so... So, Arm Gearhead is not getting any item cards. The four-star ability that Jace gets is literally just, here's two one ones. That's it. <clears throat> now, you might think, okay, well, but they do get benefit from created by cards. Yes. How many created by cards can we use here? Nothing. One, two. Nothing. 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 Uh, three, four nothing, and nothing. So in Jace's 18 card starting deck, four cards give him a created card, and then he has the two star spell, uh, the two star that gives him a six cost created by spell every turn. That's it. That's all you've got. So I start off, I think that the arm gear head is just as bad as I said it was going to be. It's literally much worse than the other rare uh, starting power that gives you a, a two one fours, the Demacian one. I can understand why they didn't give him that one because he's not Demacian. But if all they want is to give him blockers, two one ones with quick attack was not the way to go. Um, all right, let's talk about the actual cards that he gets. So uh, it's important for a character to have a curve, and Jace has a very high curve. So Jace, as you can see, uh, standard. You know, he's got a one drop, he's got a couple two drops, a couple three drops, and a four drop. That's normal for a champion. But then, he's got four six drops. Four. Now, I said in the patch review that I thought that because his two star power gave him a six cost spell every single turn, I felt that meant that there was only going to be one, two of, uh, you know, two, two copies of one six cost spell in his starting deck. I was wrong, and it makes sense. It makes sense because you have to play two spells to level Jace up, and then you still have to get benefit out of Jace leveling up, which means that you need more six cost spells after you played two, and the game exists before you hit two stars. It just does. Also, drafting, again, we talked about this with Pike, you don't have the guaranteed draft of a good six cost spell ever. So the deck has to perform on its own. This is what the deck looks like. Now that said, I underestimated Riot. I will give them that. These six cost spells are actually pretty good. So we'll start with Assembly Line. Assembly Line is a six mana slow spell that says summon two Forge Workers. A Forge Worker is a three mana three three. However, they get buffed later, obviously, like a lot of cards do. At baseline, a six, a six mana for two three threes 
is, I would say, probably a little bit better than standard. Um, if you if you think about Runeterra, if you played like a six cost minion, it would probably be a five five or a five six. So two three threes is a little bit better. You do get it to spread the damage across multiple bodies. It's harder for your opponent to block everything. And with what I know about how they get buffed later, I think it's definitely worth it. <clears throat> so this card I think is pretty good. Shock Blast was expected. This is Jace's uh, champion spell. Six mana slow, deal three to an one enemy or to the enemy nexus and three to another. You need to have two targets for this card to be worth it. Six mana deal three is not good, but six mana deal three to two targets. When you have spell mana, that's not too bad. Like uh, when you think about this in Hearthstone terms or in Magic Gathering terms or any other card game, that's pretty bad. But because you can bank mana in Legends of Runeterra, uh, six spell mana is not the same thing as six regular mana. It's it's. I would say that six spell mana is probably worth about four real mana. And so, yeah, four mana to deal three to two units is very similar to a hunter spell in Hearthstone called Multishot, um, which has been in the game for a long time, and it's not seeing a ton of play, but it is a card that functions and has a and has a use. Um, and the fact that it can go face is relevant. So this is fine. It's, this is also really good to clone. We have to remember that both of these spells can be cloned by Jace's ability. And this card in particular, if it's six mana summon four three threes, that's insane. So I, I'm glad that assembly line was included because one of my primary concerns was that Jace had to get the benefit of his, um, by getting the benefit of his crystal, he had to start to build a board immediately. And I was thinking about like the six cost spell clears the board, then he like discounts his hand, then he starts playing like one drops. That was my thought process. I did not consider the idea that Jace would actually have a six cost spell that summoned units. That's my fault. I wasn't really here for Jace's release in the PvP version, so I didn't know that he actually had this spell. I've seen it played before, of course, but I didn't realize it was tied to Jace specifically until this reveal. So, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it really, this, I mean, this this seems like a Demacian spell to me, but I understand why it's in Pilt Urban's on. All right, um, so the two six-cost spells, impressive. However, <laughs> that does make his uh, banner curve pretty steep. So let's take a look at the rest of them. Forge Chief, one mana, two, one, strike, refill, one spell mana. Okay, that's pretty good. One mana, two, one, that gives you a spell mana. You know, you could reasonably say that this is like a zero mana, two, one, then, in Jace's deck. And if you trigger the effect twice, then the card is essentially just free mana. It is hard to trigger this effect twice, of course, because she only has one health. But I do think that this card has, uh, you know, it's probably the best one drop that Jace could have gotten. It is directly related to his uh, lore as well. So I, it was an expected card, and I have no problems with it. Next up, we have Pharaoh's Financier. This card is definitely a Jace card. Two mana, two one. On summon, uh, well, not on summon. When you play him, you manifest a six plus cost spell from your regions. Um, this will make the support champion that you choose for Jace very important. If you pick a uh, region like Demacia, like if you pick Lux, or if you pick Lux Illuminator, or if you pick Garen, then um, Fire Pharaoh's Financier can get you some excellent six-cost spells like Judgment. Um, if you go into Shadow Isles or Freljord, you're going to get some control options, but that's not necessarily what Jace needs. Um, so it actually kind of dilutes your mana pool. If you, if you summon Pharaoh's Financier, and you get uh, like Atrocity, and Atrocity is not a card that you can copy because it requires you to kill an ally. Uh, that's just a bad card for Jace to get. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I'm not too thrilled about the whole manifest from your regions. I understand that that's how manifesting works in Terra, but I don't know that's necessarily the smartest thing for a draft format. Alright, uh, Miriam Temple Caretaker. When I first saw this card, I was like, this is a Janna card. What is this doing here? But this card is actually very important. So it's a 2 mana 2-3, two, and it says, on play, updraft 1 to either draw 1 or refill your spell mana. Now, this is how we can play the game. So, 
I was saying in my review video that uh, Jace feels like a character that's not active until five stars because then you can actually play a six cost spell on turn two. And I saw that on the Legends of Runeterra subreddit as well. Someone was like, this character is one of the rare new uh, only good at five stars that they're testing out. But no, so this card, which I didn't know was in the game, it allows you to actually uh, do the same thing that I was thinking. On turn two, you play this card, you updraft one card. Updraft is um, shuffle a card from your hand into your deck, and then you, it, uh, when you draw it later, it costs one less. Um, and then you choose the refill your spell mana option. So you go, you have a two mana, two, three. So that's fine. That's, you know, you have a body on the board. That's okay. And then you have one extra mana. So then you pass to your opponent, and now it's turn two. You have three spell mana. You get three mana for the turn. Now you have your six mana. So Marion Caretaker is huge. This card makes Jace function without sorcery because... The biggest thing about Jace is that he needs those discounts in his hand immediately. He needs to start using the six cost spell that he gets from his uh, from his two star ability immediately. So this card makes it so that you can reasonably use your six cost spells on the second turn, and then you can start snowballing and making plays happen. Now, as long as you can get your assembly line, then that's going to be really really good. If you don't have assembly line, then it depends on how powerful of a six cost card you get. Remember that this will only let you play a six cost card. If you're relying on the random card you generated from your uh, from your two star ability, that could be seven mana, it could be 10 mana, it could be 12 mana, those spells exist. So you're not guaranteed to get just a six mana spell if you play uh, if you play only that card. And even if you stay in Piltover and Zon, you still have Progress Day, which is eight mana. So you can't, uh, reliably get that six off on turn two if that's all you're doing. So assembly line, shock glass, those are important, and getting other exactly six cost cards in your deck is very important as well. But yeah, Miriam Car Temple Caretaker is a huge card. Next up we have Patrol Wardens, three mana, four, three. When I'm drawn, I cost one less this round. This is bad. Um, this is probably the worst card in his deck. It has no synergy with his deck. This is a Vi card. Um, this is a Caitlyn card. Um, and we already have both the Forge of Tomorrow and Assembly Line to summon us Vanillas. We don't need more Vanillas. I don't care if it's a 2-mana 4-3. It's a Vanilla. So this card is probably the weakest card in Jace's deck. Absolutely terrible. Um, and there are much better options. We're going to go over the other options that I think could be in this deck uh, later. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Forge of Tomorrow. This is a three mana landmark. Uh, when I'm summoned, summon a forge worker. So it's a three mana landmark that immediately gives you a three three. Good enough. When you play a six cost spell, destroy me to refill your spell mana. Okay, um, that's a little bit difficult because you have to keep the landmark on the field until you play your six cost spell. But if you have the space for that, it's a pretty solid trigger for Jace in particular. He really wants that spell to go off. One of the problems, though, is if you play this card and then you play Jace, um, you do get to refill your spell mana the next time you play a six-cost spell, of course. But if you if you did this early then and you haven't played two six-cost spells already, then you're going to trigger this off of one of your like six-cost spells that you use to level Jace instead of one of the six-cost spells you use to double up. Remember that Jace wants to double his effects. That's the big thing that Jace does, and this card is meant to like pay off and help you you know, have a big explosive turn. So if you play this card too early, um, while it can let you get like maybe two six cost spells off in a turn to quickly level up Jace, that's not necessarily what you want to be doing with it. So Forge of Tomorrow is a card that I kind of feel like it is dual, it's, it's a duality. You either play it really early because you don't have anything else and you need a 3-3, three, three, or if you have a board, you keep this card in your hand and you wait until Jace is leveled then you play it, and then you play a six cost spell to try and pop off immediately in one turn. Um, I do think that this is a really good card, though. All right, Pharos Sky Cruiser. This card literally carries the entire deck. This card and assembly line are like the best cards. Uh, so it's a four mana, two, four with elusive. Grant me plus two, plus zero once you played a six cost spell this game. Okay, so turn two, you updraft. 
get your three spell mana. Turn three, you play assembly line. You have two three threes. Turn four, you drop a four mana four four elusive. A four four elusive will kill people. That is absolutely terrifying. I like this card. This card is excellent. I've never even seen this card before, but it is like the best payoff that Jace could possibly have gotten. I don't care that it just stays as a 4-4. It's got Elusive. That's a huge benefit. Elusive units are very, very powerful. For those that don't know, Elusive is you can't be blocked except by units that have Elusive or Sharp Sight. Um, so a 4-4 that can't be blocked is just, it's so much threat. It's so easy to win the game off of a card like this, especially if you have like randomly generated buffs in your hand. Maybe you go into Freljord and your randomly generated six cost spell turns into Trinomir's Undying Rage and you make this get plus eight, plus four permanently. And now it's a 12-8 Elusive. No, that or you double it with with Jace. Now it's a twenty sixteen elusive or whatever. Like you can easily win the game with just this card. It's fantastic. And then Jace himself. Okay, so that's the that's the deck to start with. Now let's talk about the level ups. Okay, so Forge Chief starts with Shadow Totem. I can see why they wanted to <laughs> fix Shadow Totem. Uh, that's really important. So. Uh, Forge Chief, obviously, if you summon it with Shadow Totem, it gets an extra copy of itself, and that means that you can just start getting your spell mana right away. This is a very important thing for, like, early game Jace players to do, uh, striking to get two spell mana on turn one, so you can have the ability to try and play a six-cost spell on turn four or something. Pretty nice. Next up, we have Assembly Line. Starts with Hand Center. Hand Center is grant the top ally in your deck plus one, plus one. That is not good. That's just like a whatever card effect. I mean, it's better than nothing. You do get to like clone this, so you get, if Jace is out, then you give the top card of your deck plus two plus two. Not good enough, um, but I mean, it's the level three ability, so that's not too bad. All right, next up we have the Forger Tomorrow starts with Mana Potion. So the Forger Tomorrow is a two cost card now. That's great. It makes it easier for you to combine with a six cost spell later in the game. Uh, then we have Pharaoh's Sky Cruiser starts with Ancient Coin. <laughs> a three mana, four, four elusive. Exactly what this deck needed. So that's exact. That's that's excellent. Um, it's going to be really easy for you to play. Like on turn six, you have six. You have six mana. You have three spell mana. You play your six cost spell. You clear the board. You decrease the cost of everything in your hand. You throw out your Pharaoh's Sky Cruiser in one other card, and then you just start crushing people. Uh, this is just absolutely terrifying, and the fact that they made it cheaper along with a discount your minions deck is insane. Next up, we have Pharaoh's Financier starts with Studded Leather. A 2-mana two 2-1 two is terrible. Super weak, so a 2-mana two 3-2 three two is the bare minimum. Uh, this card will still be pretty bad, but, I mean, it, the value that you get from it is what you care about, so that's fine. Next up, we have Miriam Caretaker starts with Giant Spell. This is a huge miss. Uh, two mana, two five is fine. Not, I'm not saying that it's not, but uh, I'll talk about what I think this should be in a minute. Then we have Shock Blast starts with Charging Sigil two. Whoa! <laughs> Shock Blast, which is deal three to two units, gets char Charging Sigil two, which is plus two damage. So Shock Blast is now at six mana deal five to one and five to another and it can hit the nexus and it can double so if jace is okay let's let's say that you have a six star jace okay the dream six star level jace summon jace play shock blast you hit the nexus for five then you hit the nexus for five again you also hit a unit for ten and then after that it resolves your six cost, your six star constellation power activates, and you hit the nexus for ten again. So you hit your opponent for twenty, just just, just twenty, six mana, twenty, good enough. That's that's what that's the dream. So okay, okay, Riot, I get what you're putting down here. I I apologize. The six cost, the six star constellation, Jace. That's going to be really fun, but we have to get there. All right. Next up, Patrol Warden starts with Skirmisher Saber. Even if it's a 2-mana 4-3 with Challenger, it's not good. Also, there are no cards in the deck in uh, Jace's deck that draw you cards. So this has no synergy with Jace's deck at all. Next up, we have Pharaoh's Sky Cruiser starts with Arcane Knowledge, which is when I'm summoned draw a spell. Uh, spoke too soon, but this uh, 
this card has to be drawn. It doesn't discount itself by the number of cards you draw, so it draws a spell. It doesn't draw control wardens. Uh, drawing a spell is really good. The, I mean, Pharaoh Skycruiser is like the star of the deck, so making it better is just good. Shock Blast starts with Summoner's Beak. <laughs> this is the whole reason why I wanted to make this video, and I forgot this was in here. Shock Blast starts with Summoning Beacon. Okay, so Summoning Beacon is a rare item that says summon a follower with my cost from your regions. Uh, and so far, I haven't seen Summoner's Beacon be attached to much of anything. It's like uh, put on like one cost and two cost spells. This is a six cost spell. So uh, let's say that let's go back to our let's go back to our uh, theoretical example. You're six stars. You have Jace out. He's leveled. You play your Shock Blast. You hit. A minion for 10. You hit the Nexus for 10. Your 6-star ability triggers. You hit the Nexus for 10 again. Then your uh, your Shock Blast summons two 6-cost units for your board. And then you trigger your 3-star uh, ability twice. So you give all of your units plus 1, plus 0 twice. So plus 2, plus 0, and two random keywords. That, okay. Okay, we get it. It's gonna be really good if the if you put all the effort into it. If you have the if you have the champion fragments and you have the levels, then Jace is going to be insane. I like this. I do. I really like like they they have fulfilled Jace's fantasy perfectly. This is what I want from a Piltover and Zon character that isn't Jinx. Um, so I'm fine with this. Like I really get the the feeling of like scientific discovery and advancement. From this, from this deck, and that's it. Okay, uh, constellation. Uh, you know everything except for we have um, Forge Worker has Phage, so the Forge Workers get Phage. They are now five fives. So six mana, summon a two five fives. That's insane on turn two. And again, we're summoning two five fives. We don't need a four three vanilla. I, I, I have to stress that. Okay, um, spells you acquire in adventures cost that cost six or more have elixir of sorcery, which is copy mana on the same targets. So, the cards in your deck have to be cloned by Jace, but the cards that you get from the adventure just get cloned on their own. That's really power. That's really powerful. That's that's insane. So, if you're on um, six mana and you play this, um, like if you like if we do the updraft combo that I talked about earlier, and we have a six cost spell in our hand that that we drafted, uh, and we play it, then we immediately level Jace. Like this is all you need to level Jace. Is, is you play one spell with Elixir of Sorcery, because again, that's two spells that cost six. Um, Pharaoh's Finance Seer has Crystal Carrier, which is round start, get an extra mana gem this round. Uh, that's fine, this card is a card that you're going to play anyway. It's not gonna be useful to you on the board, you're not gonna trade with it, so you might as well just keep it on the board to get extra mana. Um, and then, uh, is there anything else? I don't know. He gets regen, which is huge. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right, so that is Jace in a nutshell. So, what are my thoughts on Jace as a character? Um, I still, I still stand by my statement that he is too dependent on his later star constellations, just like Pike is. Um, except the difference is that Pike is super aggressive, and this card is, this character is super controlly. And um, super aggressive characters are easy to play in the early game. I can go through and play Pike at like a one or two star adventure. And I'll get fine. I'll do fine with just one or two stars. It's not a big deal if my deck doesn't have a ton of lurk because I can just hit a, a person who has ten health uh, until they die. You know, it doesn't matter if I'm triggering lurk every turn. But with Jace, you need to actually be able to kill people, and I think that there's not enough of a focus on that. So I have a couple of suggestions for ways that Riot could adjust this because Riot did adjust uh, Misfortune's deck in the previous patch, and they adjusted Pike's deck in this patch. I do think that Jace will be an excellent addition to the cast if his starting deck gets a couple of adjustments. So, for starters, I think that Miriam Caretaker needs uh, Farsight Alteration instead of Giant Spell. Farsight Alteration is an, uh, a rare item that causes you to draw the card at the start of the game if it is not in your opening hand. That's really powerful. But there is a precedent for a Path of Champions character getting that on their main deck. That's Jinx. Jinx has Farsight Alteration on her 
um, card that you can discard to summon a 1-1. One, one. Um, and that is core to Jinx's strategy. It is very important that you have cards that you are feeling comfortable to discard with Jinx. In the same way, this card is core to Jace's strategy. You have to have Miriam Caretaker if you don't have Sorcery. So since they didn't give us Sorcery, they should make sure that we have this card on turn one every game. So, <clears throat> Farsight Alteration on Miriam Temple Caretaker instead of the uh, instead of the Giant's Belt, and that will be a much better deck. Next up, um, Patrol Wardens has got to go. Let's see what we can replace it with. I, I don't know. I should have planned this ahead of time. I knew I was going to say this, but I didn't know what I wanted to replace it with. Let's see, cards. Uh, why can I not sort by area? Oh, here we go. Piltover and Zon. <coughs> Three units. Okay, um... Soaring Cartographer, 333 Vlat, Brash, updraft one to draw another card that costs either more or less than the card that you updrafted. Pick a spell, create a copy of it. Okay, um... Great tech allies everywhere. Plus one, plus so when you play a six cost plus game. That's pretty funny. This card. This card's what we should get instead of the, um... Instead of the Patrol Wardens. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Brash. Uh, updraft 1 to draw another card that costs either more or less than the card you updrafted. So this will let you draw a 6-cost spell. If you updraft a 4-cost card, the only cards that are left in your deck are 6-cost spells. So there you go. This is a great way to make sure that you have a 6-cost card on the right turn. And it's a 3-3 three, three with Brash. That's better than a 3 mana, 4-3 three that does nothing. And then um, as far as an item card for this card, uh, probably... Um, I don't know, Pickaxe. Pickaxe would be fine. Five mana, uh, three mana, five, three with Brash. You know, big threat. Jace needs more damage. That'd be okay. All right. And then, um, let's see. Those are the huge ones. I don't think that... There's a lot of power in his... Um, in his assembly line, but I feel like it's not quite enough in the early game. So I do think that the hand sensor is a miss. Um, this should be healing potion. This should be the one that gives you three health. I think that'd be a lot better. Because then, like, if you copy it later in the game, when you get when you're taking a beating, you heal six. That makes it a little bit easier for you to actually go through the game, especially when you don't have regen yet. I mean, if they feel like Jace needs regen, they gave him regen, then they should give him some way to sustain a little bit before he gets that uh, that area. So yeah, um, I feel like yeah, assembly line with healing potion would be insane. Um, and then that's. Probably good. Okay, so yeah, Jace isn't too far off. I'm impressed. I do think that this will be fun. Um, so I look forward to more champions getting added to the game. I want to see Draven. I want to see Jarvan. I want to see um, uh, mainly those two. <laughs> I really want. I really want Draven to be front and center. I want like a Draven patch where just like they replace the the client with Draven's face. You know, and there's Draven music, and everyone's chanting Draven's name. Like, give me that. Give me that in Path of Champions. I'd be happy. Anyway, my name is Serafi, and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.